storm is coming. Cincinnati Bengals going to be able to get over the hump. A ton of urgency to win the Super Bowl. Fueled by defiance and resilience. A perfect storm built for one purpose. We have an opportunity every year to go win a Super Bowl. That doesn't get you excited, you're on the wrong team. And at the eye of it, a team focused on that purpose. Hey man, it's all about this. We're in first to come. Hey, turn to your brother and know we got this. Brace yourselves. Intercepted, Cam Taylor Britt. And he is gone. Let's go. Trey Hendrickson wraps him up. And the ball is caught by T. Higgins. It is go time. Welcome to the Bengals season preview on Fox 19. Now, this is fun. I'm Joe Danovan. She's Marissa Contepelli, team reporter and senior producer for the Cincinnati Bengals. It's the Bengals. It's Fox 19 now. It's NFL season. And look at this set. First show on this set. We're doing it big this year on Fox 19 now. We certainly are, Joe. And I know that we had our preseason slate, but it feels like this is our official kickoff for this partnership. And I'm so excited we get to work with you and your crew. And I'm so excited everybody at home gets to watch this show because the video in this show is elite. The editing is elite. The access is so unique. And the story of this football team is what could be the comeback story in the NFL this season. Joe Burrow is back at quarterback for the Bengals, and so are the expectations this offense could lead the Bengals back to the Super Bowl. It's obviously disappointing. Nothing you can do about it. Just, just got to grind it out. I'm built for it. Our, our team is built for it. I'm excited about the season. I'm excited about what we're going to do. And I'm excited about all the guys we have in the locker room. Well, you never know exactly how, how free agency in the draft is going to work out. There's 31 other teams hunting guys. But yeah, we feel good about the guys we were able to add. In order to be calculated in your attack, you need players that can think. And I think both Mike and Zach fit, fit that mold. Mike's a big, fast seam threat at the tight end position. And Zach Moss, a pro's pro, he's got great hands out of the backfield. He's very difficult to tackle. He's going to be able to do just about anything we ask him to do. Chase has done everything in his power from the time he's been here. We can build a, a really good one-two punch with Chase and Zach, really just establishing a foundation for who we want to be. Not every day that you get to be on a team that has the you know, history and the success that you know, this organization has had recently. Obviously, with a guy like Joe kind of controlling everything and you know seeing the success he's had over the years. When he's been healthy, man, this team has been you know, top three teams in the league. You know, that experience and the success that, you know, he's had and that this offense has had. When you got, you know, number nine at quarterback, I was like, that is the place I want to go. It's the number one question I get asked in public when I'm at basketball games or whatever it is, is how's Joe? Uh, so that's that's part of it. You know, he's, he's a big part of what we're doing. He brings a huge element of confidence. The offense, the coaching staff, everybody involved. I'll be ready to go by the season. I'm excited about the the pressure we're going to put on defenses. I think it'll be exciting to watch. We can and should win every game that we uh, step on the field to play. Well, Joe, I love hearing from Burrow in these settings because you can hear that confidence that he mm -hmm. comes with. And we all know it's all going to start with number nine this year, staying healthy. And it's been great to see him go through a full camp like he's done. And two of the guys in that piece who are new guys, Mike Kosicki, Zach Moss will have big roles mm -hmm. with his football team. But it's not just new guys on offense. There are some new players on defense. We heard Zach Moss described as a pro's pro. Mm -hmm. I think Geno Stone is the same thing coming over from Baltimore, first season with Cincinnati. Let's toss it over to Jeremy Rao and Reagan Holgate with more on Geno Stone and his role here with the Bengals. Well, guys, it felt like this defense, to your point, needed some sort of a safety valve after last season. And two big names, you already teed me up for this, Geno Stone and Von Bell. Feels like they could be game changers, Reagan, for this defense. Geno Stone was a big piece in the offseason. 
and he, him and I had a chance to sit down this week and talk about just what it's been like now being here in Cincinnati, being in a different part of this division rivalry now, but he wants to continue being that Baltimore ball hawk that he was with the Ravens. Here's more from our conversation. I feel like ball hawk is an understatement. Okay, mm -hmm. seven interceptions last season, leading the AFC second in the NFL. How do you continue that this year? Do you feel like this is maybe still a prove it season for you being here in Cincinnati now? Uh, definitely, yeah. I think it's still approved for me. Um, you know, I hear a lot of, you know, I had easy picks, whatever it may be, but um, it just shows I'm always around the ball. Uh, you know, and people ain't really like that, so. Um, people say that they want an easy pick, whatever picks, overthrows, they all count the same on the, on the stat sheet. So uh, at the same time, I just want to prove to everyone I can, I can still do it and do it again. One of those picks came on your now quarterback. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's yeah. it like to be on the other side of the ball now? Uh, it's different. Um, you know, being around a guy like Lamar, uh, more active, uh, you know, guy that can get out the pocket and do a lot of things. And Joe can do the same thing, same thing as well. But um, just the way I, I, I've been around him, I've played against him a few years now. Uh, offenses are different. Um, it's nothing but great. You know, Coach Zach, uh, you know, they all brought me in with welcome arms. And, um, you know, the way everything's ran here is, is, is different. Um, and I like it a lot. You've seen what it takes to win in this league and specifically to win in this division. How confident are you in the group that, that you guys have? that you can do it this year? No, shoot, I'm, I mean, I'm confident a lot, you know, especially when you got a guy like Joe on the other side of the ball, um, knowing they're gonna put up points, you know, you know Jamar, T, all them guys over there. So, um, you, know, they're, you know, they're gonna handle their business, but you know, our side of the ball, um, you know, we got great guys. You got Trey that's gonna rush the pass, you got Logan and, and, and G that's you know, uh, uh, in the middle, and you got me, Vaughn, and the rest of the guys in the back. So, um, yeah, I'm confident. I think we got the group that could, you know, win the North and, uh, you know, make a chance at the AFC and get to the Super Bowl. Jeremy, he's ready to go get that Super Bowl ring, as is the rest of this team. They've talked about this championship mindset a lot with us so far in the preseason. But Vaughn Bell and Geno Stone ready to be the cornerstone pieces of this Bengals defensive backfield. I mean, Zach Taylor has told us that he likes to watch the defense behind Vaughn Bell to see how he's reading things. That feels like an elite upgrade for this Bengals team and this defense this season. Guys, back to you. Well, that's right. They say defense wins championships, and we're going to stick on the defensive side of the ball because coming up next, we sit down with defensive coordinator Lou Anarumo, who tells us what his expectations are of his side of the ball. We're keeping our eye on the storm that's developing here in Hamilton County, which seems to be leaving an orange glow throughout the city. The energy from these cells seems to be gravitating towards Paycor Stadium, where the eye of the storm is now developing. This storm front, as you can see now, is spreading throughout downtown Cincinnati, and it appears to be taking over the city. Due to an increased energy in the area, Paycor is the best place to be during this time. The storm is building and the jungle is ready. Fans have been asking for it for years and it's finally happening. The Bengals will wear all orange for the season opener on September 8th against New England. That game is at Paycor Stadium. Now, if you think about it, you want a good omen here. The last time Joe Burrow had a normal training camp, he won and beat the Minnesota Vikings in week one of that season. It's his only season opening win in his time with the Bengals. He's had a nice, carefree, injury-free training camp this time, and he gets the Patriots week one, orange uniforms, Paycor Stadium on September 8th. Now, I have a question for you. So, as being part of the Bengals, do you have to wear all orange yourself? I don't have day? to, but I'm obviously going to. It's open and orange. Do you have I a outfit picked out already? I have one. Uh, Amazon still needs to deliver it, <laughs> but it should be here in time before that home opener. But hopefully we have an entire orange sea filling the jungle. It's going to be a sight to see. It's going to be cool. There's going to be events around town leading up to an mm -hmm. orange out on the first Sunday of the season. Okay, let's talk about the defense mm -hmm. here. I had a conversation with Logan Wilson inside the Bengals locker room. The word he used to me multiple times was the standard. That last year, the defense didn't live up to the standard. There were new players in. There is a new theme this year to get this team back to playing football on the defensive side of the ball. 
like they did in the past. There really is. And the other words that I've been hearing, Joe, is physicality mm -hmm. and the edge. They want to get back to being a physical defense. And it's all going to be starting up front for Lou Anarumo's team. And that's the reason, Joe, that they went out and got some of these big guys, key acquisitions in free agency to bolster up and retain that confidence on the defensive side. What one word would you use to maybe kind of describe the way that you want your guys to play this year? Physical, because that's what football is, especially in the AFC North. The Bengals have Go the ball. Baby! They are running it back. Oh, Sam oh, Hubbard, 20, yeah! the 10, the Woo! 5, touchdown! Well, yeah, I think every year is a new year, and I think guys this year have looked on some of the things that happened last year. At some point, maybe last year, we got a little comfortable when we shouldn't have, and I think everybody took a good hard look into it uh, in the spring and now into uh, training camp and feel good about where we're heading. So, you know, there's no way around it, but you don't do anything other than you, you remember this feeling, you let it motivate you, and then you come back to work. That mentality that you're always going to win, you're, you're one on one. You know, it's not going to happen every down, but that's got to be your mindset. Whether it's leverage to the ball, whether it's a tackle, whether it's getting off the block, everything we do is going to be in a, a very physical way. Everyone's here, bought in, all the guys, and, uh, you know, I, I had a great time being around all of them right now and ready to see how it is during the season. Uh, had a bunch of interceptions last year and, and uh, again, it's been around winning football, playing really good defense uh, from college all the way to the NFL to, to, to us. So just brings that, that great instincts back there and great communication skills that we really need. Yeah, very excited to have Sheldon. I think he's, uh, he's got twitch and, and can provide some pass rush uh, from the inside position. He's stout enough to defend the run and just that veteran leadership. Uh, he's, a, he's a true professional. and guy that's used to winning football games, so we're very happy to have him. Yeah, just great to have Vaughn back. It's deflected and intercepted nice. by Vaughn Bell. We all know what Vaughn can do. So far, the togetherness that we're kind of building as a unit, uh, that first group, and just guys accepting roles uh, and wanting to do well for each other, and I think that's always a great starting point. As I've always told them, you know, if you go chase a play, you're going to give up more than you make. Just be in the right spots and you'll make a ton of plays. And our guys, uh, if we can do that stuff, we'll, we'll, be, uh, we'll be successful. Andre Yoshivas. We did not forget about Dre. Our conversation with the second year wide receiver is next on the Bengals season preview show on Fox 19 now. Welcome back to our Bengals season preview show where we've already had the opportunity to speak with some of the new faces and acquisitions that will be taking the field for Zach Taylor this year. But Joe, there are a handful of young players on this roster who are eager to step into bigger roles in year two, guys like Chase Brown and mm -hmm. Andre Yosibash. And I'm glad you mentioned those two. When I talked to Andre, he mentioned that he and Chase are really tight. They're best buds. The lockers are right next to each other there at Paycor Stadium. Look, they're both in the same draft class. They're two guys in year two who are stepping up into bigger roles. Here is our conversation with Bengals second year wide receiver Andre Yosivash. The word I keep hearing from you when we talk to you inside the locker room is confidence. Where does the confidence come from in year two? I think it was just the work that I put in, you know, right after the season ended up to OTAs and then just being in the game. Um, you know, you've heard the play calls before, or I've heard the play calls before. I, I know the formations, I know what to do. And so now I can just go out there and just read the defense instead of just thinking about what do I have to do, what do I have to do. So that also helps a lot. Have you surprised yourself with how big of a role you might have this early in your career? I want to say I'm surprised. I mean, I, I'm always working to be the best receiver that I can possibly be and hoping to be one of the best receivers in the NFL um, by the time that I retire. So it's something that I'll, I always work towards, but um, expecting something is kind of a weird thing. I think I expect certain results because of the work that I do. You know, I, if I do the work correctly, then the results will come, and that's kind of how I think about it. What do you envision as a good year for you personally? Um, just, you know, being a guy that they can rely on, like on third downs, making big plays. Um, yeah, just being a, a, a focal point in this offense and someone that they can game plan around and expose different matchups, you know, just them uh, understanding my skill set and not me using it to the best I can. Do you think you've surprised people outside of the organization with the impact you've had this early? 
Definitely. I mean, you know, you see a, a guy who was picked at the end of the sixth round, kind of just a, a shot in the dark. You know, let's see what this guy can do. He can probably play special teams as an athlete. But, you know, people from the outside looking in, they never know how much work you're putting in. They don't, they don't know how much you care about it. I mean, it, I'm not bashing anyone like saying, like who thought I wasn't going to be where I am now. But, you know, I, I know that the work that I put in is, is worth where I'm at right now. And I'm just, I just, I'm glad people are still on the train and we'll, we'll hopefully we'll be riding it for a long time. But that's kind of your story, right? Zero star recruit coming out of high school, a non-traditional football power in the Ivy League, a late round draft pick, but here you are in what feels like on the brink of possibly a breakout season. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what you learn um, through college. You know, I, I went to my first year of, I mean, obviously through high school, I didn't have a great high school career, zero stars. So I had to, I knew I had to chip on my shoulder. I had to work. I got to college. You know, we had two guys starting in front of me who went to the NFL. So I didn't, I got zero touches my first year, didn't travel. I got 18 receptions my second year. Um, and then my, and so, you know, I just kept working. I kept working, kept working. And, you know, when you kind of embody that work for so long from high school through the two years of college, it kind of becomes you and your identity. And, you know, I have my dad's thing for that. You know, he always pushed me to work hard at whatever I love. So it's just, I, that's all I know pretty much. By the way, the Yoshi nickname, Cincinnati take a bow. He said he no one ever called him Yoshi until he came to Cincinnati. So that one is Cincinnati's own. Look, we always do this at training camp. The wide receivers get all the TV attention. Mm -hmm. It's one of the fun positions to watch at training camp. And everybody's wondering who's going to step up and be that third wide receiver with Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. Tyler Boyd's gone. Tyler Boyd had 98 targets last season. So there's a lot of footballs to go around to this group stepping up in that role this year. Well, Joe, it's a fun position to watch because it's such a deep position group. I mean, you talk about who's going to be that third receiver. Is it going to be a Trenton Irwin, the draft of Jermaine Burton? You have Charlie Jones coming into another year, Andre Yosivash. It's it's so deep in that receiver room, and a lot of credit goes to Troy Walters. Every time I talk with the guys, they are immediately highlighting that coach because he has done wonders for that team. And each person has a different skill set. Mm -hmm. Trenton Irwin and that reliability is something I'm going to look forward to this year for Joe Burrow. And let's also include Mike Kosicki in this. He's not Absolutely. a wide receiver, mm -hmm. but he's a pass catcher, a guy who could get a lot of attention this year. Absolutely. Well, stay with us because when we return, we are going to take you under the helmet and bring you as close to the action as we can and relive some of the best of mic'd up moments from training camp. Welcome back to the Bengals season preview show here on Fox 19 now in one of the great parts of this partnership of Fox 19 now with the Bengals is to have this unique access we've never had before at this TV station of having mics on players during training camp. That's right. The feds have been there. <laughs> if you didn't know, uh, we had the feds out of practice and the likes of guys like Andre Yosibosh and Trenton Irwin, Mike Hilton. And now is our opportunity to listen in to the best of mic'd up from training camp. I wonder what it's like listening to someone for like the whole practice. <laughs> I'm mic'd up, by the way. Uh, remember that one time you was a... Uh... No, nope, I don't remember. <laughs> You're going to start practice? I'm just forget. And then it's just going to be end practice because <laughs> I'm going to ruin the whole mic'd up. Those are your favorite cleats right there? I don't know if they've been my favorite. Good, good. Well, the second time I won. Well, third. Really? Oh, I need to cut my toenails and I have yet to cut them. <laughs> I'm paying for it. Pants are huge. Are they not? I don't know. They're like baggy everywhere. We need that bar today, bro. We gotta get on that bar today. Come on. Hey, you guys have worked your tails off every day you've been with us, okay? Keep competing and working the right way. That's why you guys are out there. All right, let's have a date some more. Come on now. Oh, 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 oh. 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 
nasty, bro. Appreciate you, dog. Gotta get credit when it's due. Since y'all having a lot of fun today, uh huh. Can you get a pick for me today, and then you catch up with you? Yeah. No, just catch two of them. All right. First day, first day, get two. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, son. Start it off. Ooh. I'm with it. Oh, that's awesome. Mm. It's always there. Gino! <laughs> Gino! <laughs> that's a hole! Look, 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 look at Mike. Look at Mike. Come on, Mike! Come on, Clouds. I see you trying to move over that way. The 10. Burrow looks. Higgins cuts inside. He walks into the end zone for a Cincinnati touchdown. Great job, guys. Great job, great job, T. Way to finish, Teddy. Way to finish. Nice job, Drake. Nice job, everybody. Nice job, T.A. Come Hello. come down with it. I'm good. Right. Waters for suckers. All right, have some Gatorade. Oh, that's a little bad one. Hi. Ooh. Oh. Ah. Uh. Ooh. Oh. Huh? What's up, guys? What's up, guys? Time out, time out, time out. Hey, time out. Hey, time out. <laughs> Why are you messing with my hair? Well, oh, when you close it, it's a little hard to no, see. No, like, no, no. Oh. <laughs> like my eyelid. <laughs> my bad. I think it was a little bit, but you got a red tone like me, man. And that's a wrap. <laughs> it's good? Hi. You have to just love some of the personalities on this team. Here we take a look at the first four games for the Bengals, of course, opening up at home against the Patriots, but all eyes are going to be on that mm. week two matchup in KC. Here's what I'm looking at, and I know the Bengals can't say this. I'll say it for them, and I know what the fan base is talking about. A faster start. Mm -hmm. I see winnable games here in September for this team to get off to the fastest start they've had in a while, but you're right. Here in Cincinnati, we're talking about playoffs. We're talking about positioning and seeding. Week two, to have that game in week two, I think is outstanding. That one will have playoff implications all season long. Week two at Arrowhead Stadium. Coming up, as we continue the Bengals season preview show here on Fox 19 now, a who day conversation, triple coverage of Dan Horde, Dave Lapham, and Jeff Hobson. Three keys on getting the Bengals back to the top of the division. That's next here on Fox 19 now. Ladies and gentlemen, sit back and enjoy the show. Our presentation will begin shortly. Yeah, you jump the book. Picked off by Mike Killer Brick. You can't jump over me. Picked off by Mike Killer. Let's go. Let's go. I did gymnastics back in the day. Oh, what a play. Bonus yard. Spinner. Bonus was to make sure he was down. Look at the cowboy. The fight. The ball is free. He does it again. Here comes Hendrickson. He's got him. CJ Hill recovers. So I'm curious, you might not know this. Did Jamar actually do gymnastics he did. when he was a kid? See, he I did. learned just from that piece <laughs> right there. You can tell that backflip was clean. Welcome back to the Bengals season preview show. Joe Danham and Marissa Contepelli of the Cincinnati Bengals. And listen, the Bengals are coming for all the trophies this mm -hmm. year, right? It's not just the Super Bowl and the AFC Championship. They want to get back to the top of the AFC North. They do. And to reclaim the AFC North title, we're going to bring in our triple threat. I love that that's a new nickname we're going to have for these guys. <laughs> Dan Horde, Dave Lapham, and Jeff Hobson give us three keys for what needs to happen for the Bengals to reclaim the AFC North. Here's Who Day Conversations. The Bengals are a legitimate Super Bowl contender, but in order to get to New Orleans, they've got to get through the toughest division in football. And in this Who Day conversation, we are going to give you three keys to winning the AFC North. Lap, you're up first. In order to compete in the AFC North, you have to be good up front. You have to be tough in the trenches. And uh, this group of offensive linemen, I think, are going to be exactly that. They've earned multiple Pro Bowl bursts. They've got four Super Bowl rings. So, you know, they've, uh, they've achieved at an individual and collective level very, very highly. Uh, I think they got a chance to be one of the best offensive lines in the National Football League and maybe one of the best in franchise history. I think they've got that, that kind of talent. 
they got everything you want. Let's start with tangibles. You know, uh, <laughs> this group obviously has freakish talent size-wise and in, in, uh, in length. They've also got quick, sudden movement ability while maintaining balance and body control. You never see them flailing away. You never see them out of balance, even though they're as, as big as they are. And they've got the attitude of whatever the team needs. I'm all about whatever the team needs. I think this could be a very special group. Lap starts on the offensive line. How about you, Butch? Well, with apologies to Earth, Wind, and Fire, but they were dancing in September, they will be there in February. All about the fast start. Uh, if they can get out of the gate like they did in 2021, when Joe Burrow had his most intense training camp, they got off to a three and one start. If you look at Burrow's career numbers down through the years, his worst month has been September. It's the only month he has a losing record. But as the season goes, Joey Burrow becomes Joe Burr. He becomes seamless Joe. He becomes Rocket Man. In December, he's got a 108.3 pass rating. In January, it's his all-time best of 113.2. In the last 25 games in November, December, and January, he's 19 and six. He just has to get over the hump in September, and he's finally got a training camp, a preseason touchdown drive. Last time he did it, they were three and one in September. They went to the Super Bowl. Song titles, stats, Burrow, nicknames, you're at the top of your game to begin the season. My key for winning the AFC North is allowing Lou Anarumo to be Ludini again. We all know that Lou's one of the best defensive coordinators in the NFL with an uncanny ability to confuse some of the league's top quarterbacks. But last year, he couldn't really do that because the Bengals were often confused, leading to too many big plays allowed in both the running game and the passing game. The Bengals think they've fixed that by signing Geno Stone and bringing back Von Bell. And the thing we have heard most often in this training camp is that the communication on defense has been exceptional. If that continues in the regular season, Ludini is going to have some tricks up his sleeve for the opposing quarterbacks the Bengals will face in 2024. Cincinnati had a winning record last year, still finished in fourth place in the AFC North. In 19 of the last 21 years, a team has gone from worst to first in the NFL. We've just given you three keys for the Bengals to do that in this Who Day Conversation. Well, up next, Jeremy sits down with Money Mac, fresh off his contract extension, and it may surprise you to find out which kick is Evan's favorite in his career. The Bengals unveiled their brand new state-of-the-art locker room to provide a best-in-class working environment. The cool design incorporates tradition with high-end technology. A few highlights include the size of each locker now standing in at 10 feet 4 inches tall, weighing 800 pounds. Nine drying fans built into each locker to improve ventilation system. A Pantone quick drying compartment to accelerate the drying time of cleats, gloves, and gear and a circadian rhythm lighting system that can sync up to music from the new sound system. I love the lyrics to the team song that pop up <laughs> yes. when they pop out some mm -hmm. of those inserts. All right, let's go over to Jeremy and Gabby now. All right, so Evan McPherson just got paid a three-year mm -hmm. extension, more than $16 million through 2027. And we talked to him and wondered, man, what are you buying with this, right? I mean, what are you going to buy? Yeah, and Evan, you know, he was a little iffy on what he would buy, but I think there might be a beach house in his future. See, I love how he's thinking <laughs> because right now, Evan Money Mac is a superstar kicker in Cincinnati. And for Evan and his family right now, life's a beach. So I have some beef, and this isn't about you. It's really about quarterbacks around the league. You know, Joe Burrow becomes, at the time, the highest paid player in NFL history. He can throw the ball, okay. Uh, I get it. People love him. But kickers make these clutch kicks. The kick is up. Yeah. It yeah. is good. And you don't make anywhere near what Joe Burrow makes. Yeah. Does, does that bother you at all? I don't, it doesn't bother me <laughs> at all. I feel like if we were to step into his shoes in a game and I'm throwing passes over 6'8 linemen and I have 6'6", 250-pound um, guys rushing at me, really athletic guys, um, I'd rather stay out of that position and I'd rather do what I'm doing. The kick on its way. Boom. It Boom. is good. 
I've got a couple of kicks in my mind that I think are almost iconic kicks for you now in your young career here in Cincinnati. Do you have one or two that were very memorable for you? I like to always go back to my first game and uh, the field goals in that game were really big for me and my confidence setting up for that whole year. I mean, my first field goal was like the 53, I think, on the right hash. And just getting that one through uh, kind of set me up for the rest of the game. And obviously the 33 yard game winner was a big one for me as well. But then you fast forward to, and I'm amazed you didn't even mention this one, yeah, in the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, if Bengals fans could pick one kick, it might be that one in Nashville, the walk-off winner. 52 It was really cool to see the reaction, like on social media, of all the people that are in tears <laughs> over me making this field goal because they've waited so long for this. And there you were, as Joe Burrow told us, saying, oh, it looks like we're going to the AFC Championship. Who says that, Evan? I mean, what kind of a madman are you to say that before that kick? I, I said it then. I mean, I'll say it now. I think you, it's all about self-confidence and going into the kick thinking that there's no way you're going to miss it. The Cincinnati Bengals are headed to Super Bowl 56. Is there something still that you allow yourself to dream about? Is it that game on the line in the Super Bowl, which which may have happened to you, by the way, potentially, you came that close. Do you think about that kick still? Do you, you dream about that kind of a moment? And that's something that definitely I feel like every kicker dreams of is kicking a game winner in the Super Bowl. But I feel like for the most part, we're just dreaming of getting back and helping the team get there. You get the new contract, you get the extension. Is there something that you're buying with that? Uh, not yet, no. We haven't figured out what that thing is yet. Um, we like where we're living right now, so we're comfortable there. Um, but maybe in the future. So you're a saver? Yes, <laughs> try to be. I, I, I've always heard live like you're broke. I love that motto from Evan. He basically wants to say for his kids, he told us. But uh, look, I said, when was the glow up for you? When you knew you were a big deal in Cincinnati, he said, well, the team was calling me Shooter my rookie season, Shooter McPherson. He said, Shooter McGavin, you know, the guy from Happy Gilmore, <laughs> tweeted me, and I knew at that moment I was a big deal. So he's such a big deal, Gabby. You can't yeah. really go out and not get recognized, but he does try to get away and have some family time still. Yeah, and him and his wife, you know, they have a little one at home. He obviously has quite the busy schedule, but something interesting, he said him and his wife try and go out and get dinner once a week, which I think that's really great. So if you're around Cincinnati, look for <laughs> Money Mac and his wife on a date possibly. Guys, back to you. Well, Dan Pitcher is moving from the sideline to the booth. And coming up next, we take a closer look at the Bengals' new offensive coordinator's journey. Welcome back to our Bengals season preview show where all eyes are going to be on the offense week one to see if they can continue that trend. They want to start fast this year. And Joe, a familiar face is hmm. going to be stepping into a new role for this group. Really enjoyed my conversation I had with new Bengals offensive coordinator Dan Pitcher before the start of training camp. What I took away from that is they want to dictate the defenses what they want to do. They don't want to be reactionary. That might be a little bit different this year. Here's the story behind his journey to Bengals offensive coordinator. In-house, one of the strongest offensive coordinator candidates this cycle, Dan Pitcher. He has now, sources say, accepted the job as offensive coordinator of the Bengals. Pitcher now stays in Cincinnati. Some continuity yeah. for Zach Taylor. Excited energy that he's really earned. He's been here longer than the five years I've been here, but played an integral part in really helping our quarterbacks have the success that they've had over the last several years. Really excited for this opportunity. I've been a part of this organization now for eight years. This feels like home to me, and it's something I know I'm ready for. And, you know, the plan is to just continue proving those people right. I think it's good. Pitch has waited for this moment for a long time. I got here in 2016. I was a quality control coach in 2019. Spent a year as an assistant quarterbacks and really helping Zach with the game management duties and everything that goes into that. And then in 2020, was promoted to the quarterback coach and held that role for four seasons. I'd like to believe that players view me as a partner who can help them get to where they wanna go, to help them play their best football. And in turn, I think I'm able to get the best out of the guys that I instruct. And today, the first game, the helm of the offense for the new coordinator, Dan Pitcher, ninth season with the organization, has worked his way up. It's very different. From 2016 to 2019, I was in the booth. 
And then uh, I came down in 2020 when I became the quarterback coach. So I've got four years up, four years down. I think in the role that I'm in, it certainly makes sense for me to be upstairs and, um, you know, be be the primary voice in, in Zach's ear. This would be an interesting go for it here on fourth and six, you said. Okay. Throw to Yosemite inside the 25 and wiggles inside the 20 and into the red zone. I think there'll be pride in how we play, that we were willing to adapt and adjust when needed, that we went out and were a, a physically imposing unit, an explosive unit, an attacking unit, one that is exciting to watch and puts points on the board. Well, we have one final block with you on our Bengals season preview show. And coming up next, I give you five things to know heading into week one, including what milestone Joe Burrow is it within reach of. September is nearly upon us, and that means it's the official return of Shiesty season. Joe Burrow enters this season after completing a full training camp where he takes the field at Paycor Stadium on September 8th, and he has the opportunity to join an elite list and can continue to write his name among the all-time greats. Burrow enters the 2024 season just three touchdowns shy of reaching 100 for his career. If he achieves this feat in week one, he would become the seventh quarterback in NFL history to throw 100 touchdowns in 53 or fewer games. Joey B also enters the season with 19 games of 300 or more passing yards. That's four shy of tying Boomer Esiason for second most in team history. Well, Jamar Chase became just the fifth Bengal to earn a Pro Bowl nod in each of his first three seasons. His 10 career games with 125 or more receiving yards comes in fourth most in the league in a player's first three seasons. And his nine touchdowns of 50 or more yards is the most in the NFL since 2021. Chase has already etched his way into the record books and he can continue to move his name up the ranks. Jamar is fourth all time in NFL history, averaging over 82 receiving yards per game, trailing only Justin Jefferson, Calvin Johnson, and Antonio Brown. Now a key for the Bengals this year is to start fast. Since the start of 2021, Cincinnati has the third best record in the league when scoring first and are 21 and three when leading at halftime. And last season, Zach Taylor's squad was 7-1 when leading after three quarters. A big reason why is the second half play by the defense. Since 2021, Lou Anarumo's group has allowed the second fewest second half or overtime touchdowns in the league. And last year during the Bengals win streak in weeks five through nine, the defense recorded eight second half takeaways and four turnovers on downs. Now, one of Anarumo's highlight machines on that defensive line is Trey Hendrickson, who earned a third straight Pro Bowl honor last season after logging 17 and a half sacks, finishing second in the league and second most in team history for a season. From weeks 11 to 17, Hendrickson recorded at least one full sack in each of those seven games, tying him for the longest such streak in the league last year. And the team locked up Money Mac through the 2027 season as Evan McPherson brings in the third highest field goal percentage in team history. His 21 connections from 50 or more yards are the most in the NFL through a player's first three seasons as McPherson holds the five longest field goals made in Bengals history. It is go time. NFL season is back. Season opener September 8th at Paycor Stadium. For Marissa Contepelli, I'm Joe Daneman. Thanks for watching the Bengals preview show here on Fox 19 now.